synchronization just got a lot more complicated. Hey everyone, um, so there's something that I've kind of overlooked with uh, the past deep dives and just general re reviews of um, copy traders. Um, Machine Learner brought this up in a comment uh, yesterday about how the value of uh, a certain stock that someone's trading, if it's too, too, out, too out of sync. Okay, so I've just opened up my, my four people that I'm copying into different tabs. So let's have a quick look at J Nemesis. So if we sort by profit loss percentage, you can also, also sort by value, but I think uh, profit loss percentage works better for me. So you can see its highest profit loss at the moment uh, is 39% uh, gains from Twitter. So what does that mean? So invested, he's got 1.64%. And as a result of gaining 39% here, his now value is no longer 1.64% because he's gained 39%. So his new value is 2.19%. Okay. Let's have a look at another person I'm copying, the S-Man. So he's sort by value in a stock called NEO. He's got 889% profit. His original invested is only 3% which is relatively small, it's a nice number. I like that number, okay? But because he's gained such a high, almost 900%, the value of that 3% investment has now gone to 19%, okay? And this is something that I want you all to be aware of when you're thinking of copying people. I would suggest to look on their, pro uh, look on their portfolio and sort by profit loss percentage. Uh, so the highest numbers at the top, and just compare invested and value and see how much of a difference the number is. Or, I mean, you could just see what the highest percentage is, I guess. Um, what I'm trying to say is eight, 900% profit on, on a stock for someone that you're copying, you know, as a copier, is, is too much, it's too high. Um, because ideally for the relationship between a copier and a trader is you need to be in synchronization all the time, as best as possible, as much as possible. So whatever he does, you do exactly the same mirrored. If he's got 900% in a stock, if you copy, you're going to, you're only going to be copying with 3%, which is his initial here, 3.17%. 3, 3 but as far as he's concerned, he's got 900% on his profile. He's just like, oh yeah, I've got 900% today, that's fine. If he suddenly needs that cash or you know, a new opportunity comes along that he wants to invest in, he might think, uh, I've got 900%. I mean, I think it's reached its peak for this year or you know, whatever. Let's close half of that amount, assuming that he's got multiple trades in this example for NEO. Uh, let's close half the trades. We'll take, you know, half of the profit that we've gained from that nine hundred percent, and we'll use that cash for something else. You know, help the chat, help help the uh, account out, help the copiers out. We'll do something new, or whatever. You know, which is fine for him because he's not making any losses or anything. He's just claiming half the money that he's made. But if a copier's only just copied this guy a week ago, with you know. 3% invested, who knows what the numbers are? It's definitely not gonna be at 900%. I mean, it'd be whatever the number would be after a week. It might be minus 1%, might be minus 10%, might be positive 5%, positive 20%, who knows? But the point is that it's, it's causing a synchronization issue because he sees the, the main trader, S-Man in this case, is seeing 900% in this stock, whereas, this, this new copier in this example is seeing a number closer to zero, you know, in this one week example, minus 20 plus 20%, you know. 
and S-Man could close at any time, the new copier could lose some money or make a very small gain, whereas S-Man thinks he's doing something good for his copiers, that he's given them a, a large you know, amount of money that's closing to inject that cash back into the account, into the S-Man copy. So this is where it gets into a tricky territory, because if you're a person, you know, you want to trade, you want to make money, you don't really care if people are copying you or not. You just want to hold it and make as much money as you can. It doesn't matter if it goes over 100%. That's fine, but you're less likely to be inclined to be copied and therefore for eventually for eToro to start paying you money because of the large amount of copiers that you got, which I think personally is the better option. I mean, just like at Jay, you know, he's got 150 million AUM. He gets what, 2% of that. I think, I think that's how it works. It's 2% AUM, 3 million a year. eToro would give him 3 million a year, I think. That's absolutely ridiculous. I mean, I'd definitely want to do that if I knew how to trade, but uh, alas, I don't. Well, I do, but just very badly. I'll stick to copy trading, but I mean, all those traders out there that are on the verge of, I just want to do it for myself, or I want to be a popular investor. It's, the style is catered around, you know, copy, copying and allowing to be copied. Definitely keep an eye on this. So it's, it's going to start parting the putting the people into two categories. And I also need to look back at my my uh, deep dives, I think. I've only done three so far, luckily. So I need to revise the, the synchronization point, which was the, the last the last one at the bottom of the deep dive. There's a, there's a formula or some sort of algorithm waiting to jump out here. So I need to sort of meet in the middle a bit. I, I don't know, I mean, it's, So let's do it like this. On the stats, looking, no, sorry, on, on the portfolio, on the history, doing by three months and how many trades they did, which is currently the first step of synchronization on my deep dive. More often than not, people will get a 10 out of 10 because people usually do more than 100 trades in three months. So that's just the average that I've seen. I've looked at quite a few people. Typically, people do a lot of trades. So let's start with uh, the starting number. We'll have a hypothetical example where the number is 10 out of 10, because most people will get a 10 out of 10. So let's go on portfolio on S-Man. Let's assume he has a 10 out of 10, even though we know he's got a four, because he's only done 43 trades, but let's assume he's got a 10 out of 10. So we'll sort by value, add to the highest at the top, and then what we'll do is we get the highest value, so 19, and then divide by invested. So that's 19 divided by 3. So 19 divided by 3 is 6. So what we'll do is we'll take that 6 from the 10 out of 10. So he would, he would get a 4 for synchronization. That's if he got a 10 out of 10 on this bit, 3 months, 43 trades. So if that was over 100. He would get a 10 out of 10. Then we'll use that little formula thing we just did to work out a number to subtract because he's out of sync on his, on his highest trade. So he would have had a 10 out of 10. We do the little thing. We get a number six. We take that six away from the 10. He would get a four, which sounds reasonable. But in the actual real case for S-Man, he's only got 43 trades in the last three months. So I can't really take a six away from that. I mean, I'll get a minus two, but even if it was two, I'd still feel like that wouldn't really make sense because he doesn't deserve such a low score of two. So how I'm gonna do it is, from now on for deep dives, for the synchronization part at the bottom, the last one, the last point, if they get a 10 out of 10 for the first step, which is the last three months, how many trades they've done? 100 trades or plus, 100 or more trades, and they get a 10 out of 10, yeah, then I'll do this thing, check by value, divide it by this, whatever that number is, deduct that away from the 10 that they just got, okay? But if they have not got a 10 out of 10, if they're a special case like S-Man, where the last few months they've only done 43 trades, because that's drastically under, you know, that would be a four out of 10 straight up. 
So I think that's let's say let's say uh, five out of ten is the threshold. So if this part of the of the process becomes under a four, so it's a uh, sorry becomes under a five. So in this case, with S man, it would be it's, it's, it's a four out of ten. We just we just skip the the the, uh, the synchronization, but we, we skip this little bit that we talked about about dividing less by this. Because a four out of ten is already quite a bad score, and it needs to summarize the trader in their entirety into synchronization. I mean, this, you know, with S man, for example, I don't want to give him a minus two. I'd rather give him a four, because that's you know what he deserves. I mean, sure, he's got quite a few over a hundred percent, so the synchronization would be out of whack a bit. But a four would reflect that surely. You know, when you see four, you don't think, oh, that's the best synchronizer ever. I think that's fair. I know there's there's some madness in the methods. It doesn't really make sense in a way. Like, you'd still need to deduct that, and why do the people with 10 get to deduct that? But the thing is, this part here, having the value being so out of whack with the invested, is such a larger issue and larger priority than how many trades they did in the last month. So working out that bit first, which most people get a 10 out of 10, as I said, you just think of that as a starting block. And then we cut them back a bit if, they're, if their value is too high. But if they've shot themselves in the foot, so to speak, and they've already got a low score, then they've got a low score. So let's do it like that. Okay, so Jazzy was my first deep dive. I gave him a two out of ten, but that was that was when I thought reinvesting was a thing, which it wasn't. So let's revise Jazzy's reinvesting section. So let's have a look at Jazzy now. Let's go on history. He's got three months. So it's closed seventy four trades. So he would get a seven, a seven out of ten for reinvesting. Uh, sorry, he would get a seven out of ten for synchronization. Let's have a look at the, okay, good, brilliant. Yeah, because when I spoke to Jazzy in the email chain after I gave him a poor score and I, that I didn't know what I was doing basically, you know, he, he comes to this realization as well about the, the synchronization issue that you could have such a drastic difference between the two and be so out of whack for your, for your copiers. So he said, whenever he reaches, at least this is what I think he said, Whenever he reaches 100% profit in a stock, he'll, you know, he'll do something to work it out. He might close it and reopen it or something to make sure that the synchronization between the copier and the trader is synchronized. Yeah, so he would get a seven out of 10 for synchronization as opposed to the, the two which I gave him. So sorry about that, that was when I didn't know. I'm sorry. <laughs> but well done, Jazzy, that's, that's good. Um, let's, let's look at Hugo. I haven't reviewed Hugo, Hugo, so I don't need to... I just want to look at the percentage. 24%. Fantastic. Jazzy's down. Jay, he's only got 39%. That's the highest, so fantastic as well. So the only ones that come to mind is the one I reviewed yesterday, JAS, uh, Jace VXR. And my copy of S Man. But let's look at JS. I think I gave uh, Jace a 10 out of 10 for synchronization yesterday. Okay, so he's got quite a few, it's over 100%. That one's fine, in my opinion. That one's not too how much higher. That one's not too much higher. That one I can live with. Same. Same. Uh, so this one is, again, it's Neo. And again, it's similar to S-Man. It's a 12% value, so it's not as high to a 3.73% investment. So it's a little worrying, but not as much as S-Man's. Let's review a synchronization. So he was a 10 out of 10, that was based on 247 trades he did closed in the last three months. 
you know, which was the only thing I was using to cater for the how synchronization works on my deep dive. And everyone, please be aware, you know, as I said, if you're looking at someone, go in their portfolio, sort by value, sort by percentage, just see what the difference is here. You don't want that too drastic. Maybe maybe set like a, a mental stop loss, not a stop loss, but like a mental thing where it's like, if they get over 100% profit or over 150% profit or something, start to have a think about it and you know, start paying more attention to them because you're going to be so out of sync with, with their progress. Uh, thank you very much for Machine Learner for bringing this to my attention. Uh, I mean, I have mentioned this briefly before, but it's just becoming a lot more apparent now and something I definitely need to keep into my deep dives. So thanks for reminding me, uh, Mo, Machine Learner, Mohammed. And I also want to thank, give a little shout out to YouTuber uh, Victor, Victor Zhang, yeah, which also Felix Fallex gave him a shout out as well. And I, as he's... It's hard to believe, but he's a smaller YouTuber than smaller YouTuber than me. I want to give him a little shout out. His videos are I've only seen two videos, but they're they're very clear and very easy to sort of understand. And he he sort of helped me as well. I mean, machine learner was saying about how the value can be so out of whack and that could cause synchronization issues. And I didn't fully understand what he meant. Whether he was talking about the thing that I already knew, which it was or whether he's talking about something else. So I, I did a little bit of research and looked at Victor, Zhang, Victor Zhang's video um, and it made me see the light. And I did see that it was the thing I was talking about, uh, which I've covered in this video. So thank you to both of you. Uh, check Victor Zhang out. He's got a good uh, eToro based channel. Nice digestible information. And uh, yeah, thanks everyone for watching. Take care. Thank you. Cheers.